In today's episode, I'm going to talk about printing TPU, you know, that soft rubbery stuff. On an Ender 2, Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, they're all about the same. And I have a new profile for version 5.0 of Cura that's taken me a little bit of time to develop. I'll explain it all on today's Film at Friday. Film at Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. If you follow my profiles, you know that I have had a TPU profile for version 4.12, 4.13 of Cura. And when I went to version 5 at those same profiles, some problems showed up. Now, I'm getting some of the best CHEP cubes I've ever printed. So, version 5 Arachne Engine is working really well with the TPU. Very, very smooth on all sides. But the top, I get separation right at the edges. So, the skin layer is not molding into the inner layer so there's no overlap so i needed to adjust that and a few other minor things temperature things like that i did adjust speed i did adjust line width so there's several adjustments i made to the profile but the biggies were getting rid of those gaps they come on top every side i mean i literally can almost pull this thing apart so that was the first thing i needed to fix Within the profile, I went and adjusted the overlap, or the outer wall inset, and the skin overlap. So once I set those to 0.2 millimeters, then those gaps pretty much went away. The next issue that popped up was stringing. I've had stringing in my profiles in the past, but nowhere near as bad as what I was getting with version 5. I don't know why, but I was getting really bad stringing. So as a test print, I printed this. This is a cable holder. You can mount it to the side of a bench and then hang all your cables from it. But it's really like a retraction test because it's got these gaps in it. And on one side, it's really, really clean. But on the other side, on the back side where the movement is, oh, it's really bad stringing. In fact, it's like a wall of string. So I couldn't put up with this, so I had to fix this. And I actually did, after a lot of testing, I got it down to very little stringing, and not zero, but very little, but I had to go to real high retraction. Now in the past, I never put retraction into my TPU profiles. I just accepted there's gonna be some stringing because I didn't want to clog the nozzle. But what I found is I can retract quite a bit and still not clog the nozzle. And let me explain why. When you're printing with TPU and you're on a Bowden setup like the Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, or Ender 2 Pro here, you're actually compressing the filament. You know, you can stretch it one way, but you can also compress it. And then the Bowden tube is like two millimeters inside diameter, and this is only 1.75. So you're gonna get some variation within the tube, small amounts, but that'll take up some compression. So if you try to retract, you're actually just pulling that compression out. How much is compression and how much is actually moving the filament? Well, that's the experiment. And there's theory that you can go as much as the length of the nozzle. As long as you stay within the nozzle with the hot part of the filament, then you're fine because you're not getting into the PTFE tubing that is right on top of the nozzle. Once you get into that gap, that's when you start to have problems. So I measured the nozzle, and the nozzle measured just over 13 millimeters. So I put my max at 12 millimeters. I wasn't going to go any bigger than 12, but I actually found I could go that big. Now that 12 millimeters is a max, and that is the retraction distance in millimeters. So some of it is reducing the compression, and some of it is actually moving the filament. How much is which? Well, it really depends on the filament you're using. I'm using very flexible filament, and so it's working fine because there's a lot of compression. If you have a TPU which isn't real flexible, reduce that number a lot. I use a five to six millimeters on PLA, so I would drop down to about that value on the, the stiffer ones. So it's something you have to adjust in the profile to match the filament that you're using. If you're printing a soft TPU on an Ender 2 Pro, Ender 3, or Ender 3 Pro, the extruder has a gap that the filament can actually escape. And so I showed this in a video many years ago of how you can fix it with just a 3D print. So let me show you that now. Here's a new extruder base. I printed this with my extra fast profile and I inserted a PTFE tubing for the gap. It also has designed in threads so you can screw in the coupling. The PTFE tubing is about 14 millimeters long and the end of it is cut to a point like an arrowhead. It just slides in until it presses against the wall at the back and it fills that gap between the gear and the idler. To install it, remove the coupling for the PTFE tube, then re remove the idler arm by loosening the screw. You can pull the spring out and its insert. 
Now I tighten the screws so I can get to all the screws of the base. Once you remove the three screws, you can lift it off the motor. Put those same screws into the new 3D print and tighten all three screws. That holds the motor in place. Now put the arm back on, the original arm and the original spring. Tighten that screw and then make sure it pivots. Then put the coupling back in. I had to use a wrench to finish tightening it. And now this thing is perfect. It fills the gap and it works great. I did print many of these prints on this machine with the stock extruder. It's a flexible filament I got on Amazon really cheap and it's a little stiffer so I had no problem with this thing printing. I had only one time where it ex escaped the extruder. But this Ninja Flex, which I printed some, this will escape. It's just too soft. So that's where this extruder came in. Now luckily I have two machines so I put it on one so I could test them side by side. Now you can leave this on. You can print with PLA or any other filaments. It, it's fine. In fact, that way you don't have to worry about if it wears out, you can just print a new one. But if you just have the stock machine, you don't want to print that, you can use that with most TPUs. I'll put a link in the description below to a .3MF file which contains this sample print, the slicing profile for TPU, and my machine profile so you could load that as a project, copy everything I did and see how it works for you. Now you don't have to keep that machine profile, you can delete it, but you'll have the profile to work with any Creality machine or clone if you start with a Creality machine profile. So make sure you load it as a project, it's free to download, try it out, let me know how it works for you. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos that are popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way. And if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.